Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. Yes, the weekly podcast where we talk about wargaming and wargaming topics. Uh, I typically get started a little early waiting for everybody to get into the room and into the chat. We have uh, a guest or two coming to the podcast today. So I want to welcome everybody on the replay. And uh, I have up here on the screen while we're waiting for everyone to get here. A lot of uh, interesting stuff out there on pirates, guys. Today's topic, pirates, pirates and wargaming. And uh, we play here in my studio, Black Seas. Uh, great game. Really enjoy it. Excellent rules. And now I have two mats that form a 12-foot gaming surface of Caribbean Sea. And as many of you may know, I play Caribbean Battles here, yeah, where all the pirates hung out. Well, not all the pirates. They went up, actually, the east coast of the U.S. Uh, let's see, Blackbeard liked uh, North Carolina quite a bit. Well, it would have been the Carolinas. So, uh, welcome everybody to the podcast. And... Um, I'll go ahead and get this uh, little video clip going here so we can have something to watch. We'll uh, do a little t talk about this. And I'll let you know what my main uh, thrust today. Columbus, the Tanyo natives used the area around Port Royal for fishing, but it's not known if they actually settled there. In 1494, the Spanish landed on Jamaica, and in 1509, a group of people settled in Port Royal. They didn't have much use for it outside of cultivating and processing sugarcane. The main reason the Spanish were on Jamaica was to keep the other European powers from being able to get a foothold in the Caribbean. In 1655, Port Royal was captured by the English invasion of Jamaica, and by 1659, 200 houses, shops, and warehouses had been set up. During this time, the governor of Jamaica, Edward Dioli, welcomed pirates to base in Port Royal. These pirates were largely made up of buccaneers, who had been living on Hispaniola and hunting wild pigs until the Spanish threw them out. These men wanted to get back at the Spanish, and the English were happy to help them out with that. The English quickly granted letters of mark, turning the buccaneers into legal English privateers, so uh, one of the main thrusts of today's conversation today, guys, is going to be Jamaica. Jamaica, Joe. Hey, <coughs> a lot of rum. A lot of rum. Uh, the uh, trade back in the old days was largely centered on sugar cane, and uh, that makes some really good rum. Uh, anybody been to Jamaica? I've been to pretty much every... Caribbean island except Cuba, which until recently the U.S. citizens, we weren't even allowed to go there, and Haiti, uh, Dominica, right? well, I've not been to Dominica, you know, the Eastern Caribbean, Southern Caribbean, uh, Western Caribbean, which is essentially Mexico, um, Cazumel, Mazatlan, hey everybody! I've got bad sound. Is it too high, too low? Any better? Any worse? Might be too high. It might be too high. I might have to turn it down. All right, we're turning her down, guys. Turning her down. There we go. There we go. There we go. How's that? Sorry, guys. 
we'll get everything sorted out here. Is that better, Sammy? I want to start a little early just in case we got to work a few kinks out of the system. Got it. There we go. Got it turned up just a little bit more. There we go. There we go. I'm up to about uh, three or four bars. Yeah, I had turned off the stereo audio. I think that was causing causing some problems. But yeah, uh, Jamaica, Jamaica Joel. Hey, we'll talk a little bit about the Caribbean. For any of you guys who have not traveled there, uh, I've traveled there, like I said, extensively uh, on cruises. Also, just uh, in general. Hey, Mr. You guys have not traveled there. What's up, sir? How you doing? You all right? Good. Good to see you. Yeah, and you? Um, have you been to the Caribbean? No, never actually. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I was going to say, you still see the remnants of pirates down there and uh, the little towns. You see some of the old, old, old buildings. And I was going to point out to the viewers that, um, whoa, there's a... There's safe places to go on the islands and there's unsafe places to go. <laughs> and Jamaica is uh, certainly that way. And in, in the terms of uh, safety, uh, if you're there on a resort, uh, been there um, with a, on a sandals resort and uh, you want to stick to the tour bus, you want to basically stick to the resort uh, because you can get into some areas that you will be robbed and, yeah. um, Western Caribbean, you're talking these days, um, basically Mexico, Cozumel, uh, Cancun, Mazatlan. Um, yeah, same thing there. There's Americans that have gotten uh, gotten abducted for for ransom. Uh, all kinds of silly things can go on if you don't uh, if you don't use your head. Um, so we're almost ready to the starting point. A few more minutes, uh, we'll get officially started. Uh, and, uh, Simon's in the house again today. Hey, Simon, I went to Nassau many years ago now though. And, uh, yeah, uh, Bermuda, uh, and, uh, Bahamas, um, great. Of course, uh, Bermuda, uh, largely, uh, affiliated with the UK, you know, with Great Britain. Uh, there is a U.S. naval base there and a British naval base there. Um, I was there one time for two weeks with a girlfriend and, uh, at the time. And, uh, yeah, be just beautiful, beautiful, had a scooter for, for the time and, uh, explored everything, uh, uh, St. George and all that. So, uh, they're known for the pink beaches, which is, you know, basically little tiny little bits of coral, pink coral. Yeah. Listen, it looks like a really nice place to go on holiday generally. Bahamas is that you got the Bermuda Triangle just on the right of that haven't you or the Bahamas yes and uh when I was in Bermuda and Bahamas um a lot of the shops will sell these maps of shipwrecks uh because they're literally ringed with shipwrecks uh because of the reefs that surround these uh atolls and there are the atolls that surround the islands and just like in the Pacific um you know, these guys would come in. If you don't know the water as well as a sailor, uh, you can easily get hung up on a reef. Um, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of salvage operations in these islands. You'll see salvers that still today work uh, shipwrecks. You'll still have, uh, you know, yacht cruisers that will get hung up on the reefs or get caught in storms. So that's a big business down there. But uh, they, they found um, one of Blackbeard's ships. Yes. I think off the coast of Florida in the, in the 1990s, as late as that. Uh, uh, St. Mary yeah, Rose, I think. Yeah, it was in a coast of, uh, it was near an inlet near North Carolina, present day North Carolina. That's it, yeah. 28 feet oh, of water. One, one second. I need to pull something down here. My curtains. Pull yeah, no down. problem. So yeah, guys, there's a lot of fun. If you can ever get to the Caribbean or even, um, uh, guys from Great Britain getting to, uh, Bermuda, um, that's such, such a beautiful place. Uh, they still have a heavy, uh, English accent. Uh, they play cricket. Uh, I watched a cricket yeah. game one afternoon on a Sunday, uh, which was really nice. Very clean. Um, not a speck of garbage anywhere. 
And then other Caribbean islands can uh, be a, a little sketchy in areas. Um, like I said, you, it's really good to hire a good, uh, uh, even when we're doing cruises and we would get on the island, we would hire someone who knew, the, knew their way around and would basically take us on a little private tour, like a taxi. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and officially get started. Looks like your buddy's here, Miff. Oh yeah, Miff. Hey, there. cheers. Hey, there, Miff. Hey. Gene, Gene, how you doing? All right. Yes, yes. Hey, hey. Yeah, we're just about pirates today. I gotta stick with Coke. I gotta go out to dinner later, and then I'll start drinking. <sighs> yeah, fair days. Yeah. So um, my wife might have to drive us home. Oh yeah, one of them. But um. So yeah, yeah, pirates, pirates, pirates. I, I learned a lot this week about pirates that I didn't know. Yeah. One of the first things I'll start the topic off or the the conversation off with would be this. One of the main things I found out that surprised me. You always think of the ships and they're they're fighting each other on ships and they grapple with other ships, but I found a lot of the pirates uh, would raid strongholds on various islands, uh, port. Uh, uh, Port Royal in yeah. the in Jamaica, they did a huge raid. I think there was over fifteen hundred pirates involved, where they went just straight where the gold was being stored, and uh, they would steal it. Yeah, <laughs> they would kill the Spanish and steal the gold, and they would uh, you know cart it off to some deserted island and hide it. Um, which is really interesting. What do you What do you guys uh, What are your guys' thoughts on that? Well, it's always easier to rob a robber than it is to rob the rob the state. Yeah, right. Yeah, true. It's, yeah, it's that, like, yeah. Who's going to complain for robbing a robber? You can't. Do, you ain't going to get the the navy coming, the royal navy coming up here. Are you? They're going yeah, after the pirates who's already robbed it. They ain't going to rob the. Ro well, they yeah. rob each other, of course, and then uh, they would. Uh, find out where valuables were stored on, on the islands and they would go and get them and uh, make off with the booty, uh, especially like the time when the Spanish fleet was caught in that uh, hurricane on the, off the coast of Florida. And they uh, went over there and uh, salvaged a lot of the gold and silver off of those wrecks. And they, there was a lot of fighting over that for, for many years. Yeah. They reckon it was like the equivalent of hundreds of millions of dollars something like nine Spanish fleets. They, they, it, the 10 years or something, they'd been at war. So they had all this gold from South America all piled up in, in these ships. They, they took them up the coast of Florida and they all got shipwrecked, didn't they, uh, by hurricane. And this, you had all these pirates going out there trying to trying to grab it and all fighting over, fighting over it themselves. And, right. you know, that's, that's where it all kind of started, the golden age of piracy, really. You know? So, hey, Miff, uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am uh, I think Sammy told me a little bit, but uh, what's your background and uh, your interest in wargaming? He's not, not really into the wargaming as such. More of a history. It's merciless. Uh, yeah. Are we, says. Are we froze? No, we're good. Yo, you guys are good on my end. Can you see me? Can you hear us, Miff? Yep, I hear you good. I think he's got a a connection problem. Miff, you hear us? Hey, Mr. Miff. They might have connection problems. Right. Yeah, no, I haven't been in a while. It's yeah, it's really interesting. It's, we, had a, we had a good chat in the pub, actually, uh, last year before this, and we were talking about pirates, so that's what made me think of him, you know. Because uh, he's... Uh, I'm going to speak very slowly because uh, the, the, you was breaking up there. Oh. No, I was just well, telling you, we had a conversation like about earlier, I know nothing about wargaming, but what I don't know about is pirates. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lost him. Yeah, it's probably his internet. No, but he, he knows a lot about pirates. He's from Wapping, where uh, Executioner's Dock was, you know. So he kind of knows all about the history of that. And, do you know, he had, a, he had the famous pirate from Wapping. And he was, uh, he was part of, um, I'm trying to find my notes here, Lord Hamilton, is it Lord, no, Lord Hamilton was the governor of Jamaica and he commissioned Henry Jennings and he had, uh, he was an established privateer, wasn't he? Had quite a few ships and he, one of his crew was, um, I'm trying to think of his name now, a famous pirate, uh, who was executed in Wapping. He, he grew up on the streets there. Uh, Charles Vane. I said Charles Vane. Yeah. I mean, uh. 
and they he had uh, like a lot of them did. They had a uh, a contract with the government where they could uh, attack French and uh, Spanish ships at, with impunity, and uh, basically um, they would get a cut. Mm-hmm. They give the the king his cut, and uh, at some point, uh, you know, we're talking mid seventeen hundreds. The the British government uh, outlawed them. Uh, which, which was pretty interesting, but, um, but yeah, I mean, that Port Royal was, uh, I mean, it was something else. Uh, we've got a lot of information out there. Of course, the famous, uh, point where they had an earthquake and a large part of the pirate quarter, uh, basically sank into the sea. (laughs) So they think um, modern day Kingston, is that? Is that correct? It's its own, uh, yeah. There's Port, port Royal, Royal and then there's oh, Kingston. I see. I'm looking at the map now. Yeah, the Port Royal is the port to the south of the city of uh, of uh, Kingston. Correct. And um, it's still a, a major port. Um, a cruise ships still come in there. And um, uh, the time I was there, I, I did, wasn't on a ship. We flew in. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating place. You can see here we got... Uh, the old uh, forts. There was several of the forts around the the bay there to to lob uh, cannonballs at the pirates or you know anyone that would come in and try to take the gold and silver. That was the holding place before they put them on the galleons and sent them back to Spain. We're talking in today's value. Those ships were carrying hundreds of millions of dollars worth of mm. silver and gold. Uh, a lot of pirate activity. Uh, basically, essentially, the pirates took over the area yeah, the later period of the pirates. Um, so, so, yeah, yeah I mean, this, he, that he, was he talking, the, about, talking about Nassau and uh, where the pirates took over. Right. And there's so many islands down there. Um, they could have a, their own little private base if they wanted to. And yeah. there's still, you know, a lot of treasure hunters will rifle through these little small islands, these little deserted islands looking for caves and things where the and uh, using metal detectors to try to figure out where a lot of these pirates hid their booty, right? Looks like Myth's yeah. coming back in. <laughs> hey, there he is. Are you back? Hey. I'm sorry. Time to call the internet company and, and <laughs> bitch. <laughs> uh, I've just been shang yeah. So, Myth, I'm oh. all ears, man. Tell us uh, what you know about the pirates. You, uh, Sammy says you lived in an area where they were hanging a lot of the pirates. And, yeah. Uh, it, it, I'm from Wapping. In East London, um, and uh, there's execution dock down by the river there, uh, and it's it's where they hung all the pirates. And what they do is is they take them from somewhere like uh, the Nick, or from Newgate, or wherever they was holding the prisoners, and they parade them on the back of a a, a, a cart. And thousands of people would line the streets to see them going up to be executed. And they'd stop off of every boozer on the way. And the last boozer was always the Turk's Head in Wapping, where they could drink as much as they wanted for nothing and give speeches and address Hmm. the crowd and go out in their finery. And uh, Wapping's famous for it. There's There's even Pirate's Park in Wapping. Which is unbelievable. There's the Catching Kid pub that was named after Catching Kid. There's the Prospect of Whitby that still got the gallows outside where I hung them, which is uh, where I got my where I had the, the, my wedding. So, <laughs> so I got married next to the gallows where the, where the pirates hung. Interesting. I wonder if that's where they got three sheets to the wind because. Uh... By the time those guys were swinging, they were probably pretty well uh, on their way to uh, La La Land. Very well. that's, a, that's a saying, isn't it? Uh, three yeah. sheets of the wind meant you were falling over drunk. Right. One sheet was you were tipsy. Two sheets were you're on your way. I've always felt that one sheet's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you make it to three sheets, the next day is going to be really long. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah, that so that's I would have never have thought they would have given them the levity to hit all the pubs and get all good and liquored up and uh, pretty interesting. 
it, it, it was it was the celebrity of the day because the, their stories were told in the penny dreadfuls. I mean, most of the, most of the, the, the general public couldn't read or write, but the penny dreadfuls were sold and resold, and the stories was told. Uh, and th they was the rock stars of their day. You know that these people had nothing. I mean, Wapping was a no go area. There was no such thing as police or any sort of policing at all. The army wouldn't even go there. And oh. the Tower of London is based next to Wapping. That'll tell you how bad it was. Um, oh. It's where the term mob, the mob, first uh, was 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 brought into the language. Uh, King Mob, which was the first mob, marched from Wapping. It was prostitutes, sailors, derelicts, thieves, and they marched on Parliament um, and obviously got defeated and was hung by all the way from Parliament back to Wapping. But um, the, the, the Wapping was a, a real no-go area, a real no-go area. Interesting. Uh, there's a lot of places still like that in the Caribbean where these pirates, they had this whole thing that they set up down there. There's still, like I said, it's a lot of, still a lot of traces. You can still sense it and see it in certain areas are slummy. And um, you can kind of still see the, the old pirate influence down there. But it's a, there's the, that pirate attitude, the lawlessness, the somebody outside of the law, um, struck a cold with people from the whole of East London, never mind just Wapping, but there's that outside of the law attitude with a lot of people. That's why so much of the language that was used, um, I've got some of the sayings here, uh, some of the sayings even used today in East London, you know, like I'll give you oh, some yeah. examples, like when you pay through the nose for something, that's, a, that's an old term, like it means you get ripped off, you know, uh, and that basically is when a seaman was killed, they'd, they'd wrap them up in their hammock, uh, and then they'd sew it up, and they'd put two cannonballs at their feet so their dead body wouldn't chase the ship, you know, haunt the ship, and they'd uh, they'd sink them, and they'd put the last uh, stitch through their nose, so, you, you know, check they're alive, they don't squirm, so that's, that's where they turn paying through the nose for something, so it means, means you're paying heavily for it. Or uh, sling your hook, get, get out of there. Slice the main brace. What's that one? Slice the main brace, it means to what? have a drink. Oh, does it? If you slice the main brace, you're letting everything go wild. So you turn around and you have one too many drinks, so you splice the main brace. Right, I see. So that must <laughs> be the main the main rope that holds the main uh, sail. So then the ship goes wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you had, um, you had uh, chock a block, which means, you know, yeah. something's really, really uh, busy. So it's, um, you, know, you know, if my mum went down to the shops, you go, oh, it's chock a block down there. It means it's so busy. And that, that, that was just how you strapped down cargo. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. all move around, you know. Uh, the cat out of the, the cat's been out of the bag. Do you guys know the that one? Nine tails. Yeah, so the nine whip they used to whip the servers with had nine tails on it. So when the cat's out of the bag, you know there's trouble. You know? Fre freeze the balls off a brass monkey. I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's if, a good if, hey, welcome to the podcast, if it's, Master. If it's cold enough to freeze the balls off a brass monkey, it's where <laughs> as they used to stash uh, stack the cannonballs. On top of one another, and if 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 it got too cold, that the the, the cannonballs would go away from one another. They'd break up. They'd come out of the stack. So it was freeze the balls up a brass monkey. Oh. <laughs> so many good ones. No, it, 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 in it, especially in everywhere from Bristol, Liverpool, um, Newcastle, any any of the docks it, in. England, the UK, and around the world, because you know you could. My grandfather's brother was um, press ganged. Now that that's only two generations, mm -hmm. and he was press ganged. Uh, he um, heard he was a docker, and he heard there was a job in Tilbury, and walked from what into Tilbury, which is a fair old way to go and find a job. When he got there, there was no job. But he bumped into a bosun that he knew. Uh, he used to regular come into uh, Wapping Ducks. 
And he, the bosun said, why don't you come for a pint? So he went for a pint. Next thing he knew, he woke up. He was on board ship, and the bosun handed him a shovel and said, you're a stoker, which <laughs> meant he was – that's yeah. it. You're a stoker. Start shoveling. We <laughs> well, he did. He, he hit the bosun with a shovel. And they <laughs> – they they whipped him. They cut an iron tail him. Yeah. Which he, and he held the, the, the scars till the day he died, according to my grandfather. And that's the um, thing. Most of these guys were press games, weren't they? You know, exactly. originally, to see. And, and, and the thing was, he'd got away to look for a job. His old woman's at home with the kids, with five kids. Three years later, he ends up back in London knocks on the door, she passes out, she thought he was dead. Yeah. Now, that, that's not long ago. That That's a steamship, for Christ's sake. That's that's in the 20th century. Yeah. So the, so these traditions still carry on to this day. The early, the first early form of the draft. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was taking, take, taking the king's shilling. The reason that many pewter glasses in in cities that had docks had glass bottoms was because if you turn around and you you took the drink and there was a, a shilling at the bottom of the drink you were now in the navy so they used to put glass bottoms in the bottoms of the of their pewter oh, glasses you could see. You could so you could see if there was a, <laughs> a shilling in the bottom of it yeah so, so i guess so they were they were they were you're under their mind. Exactly. You take their drink, you took the, took the king's or the queen's shilling, and away you go, mate. You're on board. So would you guys think that a lot of the early pirates, uh, we're talking the 1600s here, to get out of the country and to get out of their low standard of living, the lower class person, they probably, most of them were more than likely, so they would probably get... Um, forced onto the naval ship, then the naval ship would head down to the Caribbean to either, or even a merchant ship uh, to pick up supplies and then they would what uh, escape, I guess, and then form bands of guys, these lawless guys, and they would abscond maybe a, a sloop or some kind of ship and they'd just become pirates that way maybe. What do you guys know about that? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit more than that. Well, what would happen is, is that... Um, you could be paid by the crown to turn around and take ships, uh, and the booty would be divided amongst the, 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 the crew. But if your ship was taken, you could turn around and sign the papers for that ship and turn pirate and get far more recompense for doing exactly the same job with exactly the same people. Yeah. Than doing it for the crown. Yeah, I think I think a lot of it was after uh, after they the, the British crown incentivized, you know, the pirates. They they gave out those letters of mark because they were trying to dis disrupt the, the French, the Dutch, the the, the uh, Spanish, Spanish merchant ships. They, they had eighty percent unemployment after after those 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 marks those letters of mark were gone. You had eighty percent of the sailors sitting around in the Caribbean with nothing to do. So of course they're going to start privateering. You know. A lot of the time as well, the, the Crown would say, okay, you can private... Captain Kidd was given licence to turn around and, and pirate ships, and, and and the Crown reneged on it. They just made him a scapegoat. Right. Captain Captain Kidd wasn't the the, the, the... the He didn't set out to be a pirate. He right. wanted to be part of the establishment. Yeah, and then he he was kind of a figurehead for a lot of the uh, next generation of pirates after that. After, in the golden age, they all kind of reference him as um as kind of you know a bit of a hero, you know, Captain Kidd, because he got I think he got caught in the early seventeen hundreds, didn't he, and hung or something. Well, he, he yes, he did. But he, he, what he did is he gave himself up, thinking that the crown would would stick by right. uh, the charter that they gave him. He gave himself up in. Um, New York, and they said, "Oh, go back to London, and you'll be okay." So he got back to London. First thing they did was bang him up, stick him in chains. Wow. Well, Henry Morgan cool. ended up that way too, and at the end of the day, he was back in England as a as a. I think the Queen even knighted him. 
uh, or no, uh, King Charles knighted him. Um, at, first he was going to hang him and then he knighted him, I guess, but he became a really wealthy plantation, uh, owner, uh, down in Jamaica after Logan, a while. Yeah. when they outlawed the pirates, he was able to spin that off and he was able to do his sugar plantation as, uh, so yeah, a lot of those guys, uh, either got double crossed and hung, like you guys said, and then a lot of, a lot of them had made enough money. They probably, I, I didn't find a lot on this, but they were able to buy their way out of the noose. <laughs> and even in the case of Henry Morgan become a, uh, not a Lord, but a knight. Well, you, you, you've got other, other people, uh, like, uh, blood, Captain Blood who was actually allegedly paid to steal the crown jewels by the king and give the crown jewels back and then became knighted. And da, da. it's the only person who's ever been able to rob the crown jewels and get away with it. I've never even heard of, that, <laughs> I haven't heard of this guy. He was the thinking Patrick outside Clark. of the box. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got, what uh, are we talking uh, here? Didn't Queen Elizabeth the first commission Henry Morgan to steal Spanish ships? Yeah, that uh, was true. And Drake. Yep. Yeah, Drake. Drake was before Morgan, wasn't he? A little bit before. Yeah. And he's the one that actually Drake. He went around. Uh, I'm getting feedback or something. Is that me? Yeah, he, um, he Did actually, you turn your speakers down a little bit? Sorry. Yeah. Just turn well, your speakers down. down. Is that better? Yeah, should be better. Testing. Yeah. yeah so yeah, he yeah. actually. Um, sailed into the, the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, you know where the Panama Canal is? Yeah, because there was no canal there, obviously. He then got, he, I think he literally got always meant to carry everything in, in small boats over to the other side and then uh, and then sailed up. And they reckon he was the one that discovered the tribes that live in modern day Vancouver. And this was, you know, we're talking, what, 1500s here? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, no, no. I can't believe where far they went. <laughs> they're always on the lookout for more gold and silver um so that's you know they were they were thinking hey you know they thought if you get to the other side uh, that was china even so um but yeah that you know the the hunger for gold and silver and then the spanish would pile it up waiting for the galleons to come and get it and they uh they used to work that now the next point i wanted to bring up is the type of ships that most pirates used, uh, especially when we're doing the, the war gaming aspect of this. And that is the sloop. Um, I'm going to bring up the sloop. And that was a point, my point. So they'd take the big ships from either the King down to the Caribbean, either with a merchant ship or a uh, naval ship. Once they got down there and they went off to start pirating, they would use these sloops. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring... Well, yeah, they, they they chose to use them because obviously they could catch a larger merchant vessel. They could, you know, get behind it, take it was quicker. It, it can defend itself, get in front of it. Sorry, it was quicker. Yeah, it was more. And then, and then once they once they caught the merchant ship, they could use that to, to haul their goods back, you know, and escort it with the smaller smaller boats. Right, and here I, I got a picture of the sloop. Now uh, this would be very similar. I for many years I owned a. Uh, it's made by Catalina, Catalina Yachts. I had a, a Catalina 22. It had a, a, a small kitchen, a, you know, a, a galley. It had a place to sit. It had a forward berth. Um, and uh, so, and I have my keelboat certification, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the point of this type of sail, the triangular sail, it's really like an aircraft. It's uh, in terms of lift, it, uh, it pulls the boat because of the, the uh, as it goes through the wind, it actually creates a, a drag. So this type of boat, you're able to sail closer to the wind where the square rig ships uh, had to go more of a reach. Uh, they couldn't go as close to the wind as, as these sloops could. And like uh, Miff is saying that they're so much faster because the average size of a skiff that the pirates use was typically 35 to 50 feet. And I can tell you, my um, my boat had a 900 pound uh, keel under the boat, which these boats have a keel also, um, and that uh, helps hold you down. And then you can really go fast. Uh, I was saying because you got a lot of uplift. You're saying they need to be weightier at the bottom, yeah. 
Right. And so the, the keel acts like a, almost like a wing on an airplane. Also, as it goes through the water, it's also pushing you and the, um, the sail, the, the diagonal sail or the triangular sail is pulling you. Whereas the square riggers, they had to get the wind in the sails. It wasn't really, it was pushing them, not pulling them. So you're going to literally run circles around these, these galleons. Um, and you, you, and you the have sailing, sailing close to the wind. Correct. Sailing close to the wind. And that's the thing. There's that point where as you go directly into the wind, your sail starts to luff and you're not going nowhere. So you could get, if they, if they were good at setting their sails, uh, which I got good at, you can get really, really right up almost into the wind and you're still cruising. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, great little boats. Um, and they would just take pot shots at you, uh, take out your rudder. Um, and then by that point, um, if they had enough of this, the sloops as a, as a squadron, uh, they would just board your ship and take you. You just have to surrender. A lot, a lot of the time it's interesting because I was, I was always confused of how these such, did, you know, all these pirate ships were so small compared to the Navy, but how, how they had such success. And uh, like Francis Drake, he, he most of the time would actually just, See a see a ship. Wait till nightfall, and uh, you know, send all men out in their long boats, almost like rowing boats, and they just climb over the side at night. Right. You know, it was more rare I found for them to take a big ship like uh, just you know taking pot shots at them, taking out the rudder, as opposed to what you're saying. They would either uh, use stealth and take them in port, or they would um, wait till they're at anchor and come and take them. Because it was a risky proposition, even with a maneuverable boat like the sloop and a fast boat. Uh, if you had a good gunner on on uh, on on one of the galleons or even on one of the standard third rate ships, uh, they'd probably uh, hit you, hit you. Yeah, so, a few uh, couple of shots, and you're in real trouble from those big from those big cannon. In in, uh, do you know anything about the the the, the pirates in Madagascar? No. no. Ah, right. They're still down there. They still deal with pirates <laughs> down in those areas. But it, 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 back in the 1500s, 1600s, uh, Madagascar was run by a female queen pirate. And th it was known as a haven where you could go in and take refuge from the people that were hunting you like the spanish or the english or wherever it may be and their ships were all sloops and they'd wait until they moored outside whatever bay and just batter the ship and there was nothing that, that they could do about it and madagascar was like a graveyard for uh, um galleons and, and mm. god knows what whatever you you'd call them but uh madagascar was a real pirate haven but defended by sloops well, well, and also, was, i think with the uh, with madagascar where it's positioned because you know it's right off the off the cape of africa there yeah. uh, a lot of times inexperienced ships would assume it was the cape of africa they were reaching and they would uh think it was a safe harbor to get too close and then get ambushed absolutely and, and the that they reckon that the, the Madagascar was a hell of a place, I mean, more than Jamaica or anything else, to to go and visit. And there was obviously death through disease and God knows what. That's it's still it's sketchy. always been a hotspot for black the Black Plague there, isn't it? Still is today. It's very sketchy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, even today, is guys, it, is they, they've got the speedboats. We'll take oil tankers and hold them ransom, right? And they'll say, hey, if, if you don't cooperate, give us money, we'll just blow the whole ship up because it's full of oil. And uh, they're just using speedboats. And most of those guys are coming out of Somalia, the Somalian pirates and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think they put a big stop to a lot of it. I think the British and U.S. Navy, you know, got on the scene and uh, patrol the area more. But um, some of the documentaries I've seen on this, now the... the uh, the oil tankers now they got 50 cows and they've got sound uh, sound systems they can blare sound at the pirates to get them to go away so and there's even small cannon 
that they'll shoot at the Somalian pirates. Because that for, for a while there, they were really putting a hurting on the oil industry out there. Yeah. Well, they, they was also, also kidnapping people and turning around and holding them as ransom. Yeah, they right. take them alive, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. And the guys in our sailing dangerous club, waters. The guys in our sailing club would tell stories uh, where they would go on these, uh, they're called charter boats. You go down to the Caribbean or even, you know, Africa, Australia, and you get three or four couples, you're all sailors, you're certified sailors, and you could, you could charter a boat for a couple of weeks, a month, whatever you wanted to do. And the big concern of some of these areas, they were telling me that they wouldn't rent and do charters because of the pirates. There's still pirates that will get out of these yachters, you know, they would come and, uh, get on your boat at night when you're sleeping at anchor somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so you know, these take, couples that go sailing around the world together, they, they, yes. there's a common question that you, you ask yourself, do you arm yourself or do you not, you know? Because uh, a lot of the time these weapons, you know, end up getting used against you. Another another big problem is um, apparently for small boats, it, uh, you know these containers that fall off ships and they, apparently they, they float about a metre under, uh, under the surface of the water and there's so many of them yep. now. That, um, that apparently, that if you hit one of those at night, you can't see it on radar. You know, there's no way of detecting it, and that's just that can sink you. And you, that's that's why a lot of these small boats disappear still. Yeah, know? Robert Redford, I think, had that movie where he was a yachter, single handing around the world, and he hit one of those container ships uh, or containers. And yeah, uh, in the movie, I think that was one of the only movies there was never dialogue. It was literally just him trying to survive. I saw that film. It was good. Yeah, yeah, it was a it's great good. flick, but. I've heard those stories too. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, Hey man, when you get out there, I always tell people when you get to the ocean and you're out in the ocean, you're now part of the food chain, <laughs> right? So there's a whole lot of that's beyond your control. You could be the best sailor in the world, have the best boat, the best equipment. And there are things that will take you out. Uh, about 10 years ago, um, we was making a documentary with a company called SeaTech who salvaged ships and anything to do. If it went down in the sea, the, the, they was the company who you phoned up. They was all ex-naval um, officers, Marines, God knows what. Um, and they showed us a film of when they was attacked by pirates. And it was unbelievable. I mean, they, they, these guys, are, they're on, just on board a ship trying to salvage stuff and they're getting attacked by pirates willy-nilly left right and center and they're not allowed to shoot back yeah and and, and, and defend themselves as such they've got to fire above their heads they they they've got to play by the rules of the sea whereas the pirates parent no. <laughs> but that's definitely crazy. haven't and when was this just recently you're talking about yeah this is like eight years ago Wow. Yeah, this is a, a hot spot for us right now. Called Eddie yeah. Wilson, uh, making a documentary. The company's called CTEC. They're based in um, Southampton. Mad bunch of bastards, real mad. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're still dealing with it now. There's a, a couple of YouTube channels I follow that are sailors, um, and they're full timers. Um, and uh, the big hot spot for them down there is uh, around Colombia. Um, you know, even down along, uh, you know, Argentina, around Brazil, because those economies are are not doing so well. So people are just getting in speedboats and they're hitting these cruisers, these wealthy American and European uh, cruisers. These guys have made a shit ton of money in the market or whatever, and they retire early and buy a million dollar yacht. And uh, they don't realize that uh, a bunch of Colombians in a boat all hepped up on coke are going to come out when you're anchored at night. Uh, take all your valuables and do naughty things to your wife uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and kill you in the process. So, yeah, yeah there's been a bunch of cases. Uh, well, as I say, well, unfortunately, what they do now, the, the modem operandus is it is they, um, instead of leaving the evidence, they, they, burn, they burn your ship and they sink you. Right. You know? The Scotland. last thing they want to leave is the ship yes. there. Just get rid of the evidence. evidence. Yeah. Yep. yep. And, uh, so that's know, the thing. So, you know, really, you really got to think about it. If you are going to go to sea, I would personally rather be armed, you know, but that's a choice each person's got to make themselves. Yeah. And there's a lot of ins and outs on that. I said the same thing in a conversation with another sailor and, you know, 
me being a gun guy, I'm like, Hey, you should at least have a sawed off shotgun, um, for borders. And now they've got security systems now that, uh, when they can get on your boat at night, when you're sleeping, it'll set off alarms. Then of course, if you have a two or three couples on the boat, obviously you have night watch. Um, there's a lot of ins and outs. I come, it comes to find with, uh, it depends on whose waters you're in, if they will uh, allow you to have a gun. And of course, as you come in and out of these ports, uh, they want, they send out the uh, people to inspect your boat. They're looking for drugs. They're looking for guns. So you really have to stay on top of what you can and can't do. Cause a lot of these South American countries, man, they will, they're just going to roll you, right? They'll find something to, to take you to jail. And then you got to pay a lot of money to get out. Uh, cause they're just like pirates too. Um, you know, you could go to Mexico, the Mexican, we went down there once we were in, uh, we were going to Cozumel for two weeks and, uh, in the airport in Cancun on the mainland, all the Mexicans are in the airport snorting Coke. And I'm like, if an American did that, they'd throw your butt in jail and you'd have to pay thousands of dollars to get out because the local officials just roll you. Uh, yeah. So well, there's, saying, there's a lot of land-based pirates, <laughs> right? Or if you get drunk or something and you're coming back to your hotel at night and you're stumbling around, they just might say, hey, let's grab this guy. He looks American. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how much money they'll pay to get him out of jail. Yeah, that happens a lot. Oh, so, so I was reading about some of the diseases as well that were rife during that period of, uh, of um, you know, the 1700s and all that. And, you had obviously scurvy, which was uh, vitamin C deficiency, yep. lack of fresh fruit and all that. But I think that's why um, that's why the British started carrying uh, lemons on board on long limey. voyages. Uh, yeah, but they, then I say they call us limeys, even though that's actually incorrect. We actually carried lemons, not limes. Correct. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, you had gums rotting, you got weak, you had skin rashes. Mm. Then obviously you had the syphilis, which was rife. Uh, I think my oh. I lost it. Again, the internet question. Syphilis, yeah, which was rife because you had uh, obviously when when they were making so much money down there, you had lots of prostitution pop up in these pirate ports, you know, because there was right. so much gold flying around, and that's why they reckon that's why some of the pirates you see them capture these ships, they get very cool. They've spent it all in a few months on um, you know, whoring and drinking and, and you know, well, wherever else, and so the sexually transmitted disease were rife, and obviously, um, you know, that would attack your soft tissue and. And uh, they reckon yeah, Blackbeard had it. Um, yeah, and some of the treatments they had were barbaric, you know, and almost worse than the actual disease himself. Um, and that ship they found that was sunk off the coast of, um, uh, as you said, Carolina, I think you said it was. Yep. They, uh, it was it was actually a French captured uh, ship, and they had three surgeons on board. And, they, and the reason they captured it so easy was because the whole crew, most of the crew were sick, lying in their bed. And, uh, yeah, they had all sorts of... Uh, Many French-made tools and devices, but uh, yeah, some of those, some of them were worse than the actual uh, disease, you know. And then they had the bloody flux, which was uh, nowadays known as an ebic, an ebic, uh, amoebic dysentery, which is, um, which is you know, a parasite because they were eating so much mm -hmm. bad food. Like they had um, those, uh, they had almost like uh, this. I can't remember the name of them. They were forms of bugs that would um, often be found in the flour. And in the um, mealy bugs, the bread. yeah, they, they'd eat them actually. And then also they'd also capture the rats, eat, eat the rats. Um, you know, so God knows what they're picking up half the time just from these these sort of, sort of practices. You know, yeah. uh, we're just talking about some of the diseases and the uh, some of the food they would eat. You know, well, did, I did, I watched the program last night um, on the BBC Four, and it's. Up until Captain Cook circumnavigated the world, nobody actually knew the cure for scurvy, which was a particularly nasty disease where your gums would rot and bleed and just disintegrate and your teeth would fall out. It's a very painful death. And up until then, 80% on average of seagoers died of scurvy unbelievable Their this was the first out. journey where nobody died at all and it was completely and by accident they was eating sauerkraut 
and limes. Oh, wow. A complete I guess miracle. sauerkraut would last the journey, I guess, wouldn't it? Because it's um... Absolutely, yep. And the vinegar yeah. would be good for you, too. Um, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of uh, nonsense that went on uh, that they had no control over. But the thing that I quickly am realizing with wargaming in this period, even with Black Seas, is at some point you have to maybe do 28 mil or whatever uh, with doing some island actions, like either attacking a fortress and stealing gold or... Um, you really can't really just make it ship based, uh, yeah. as far as working, you have to add some element of, uh, island yeah. activity as it were. <laughs> no, I think, I think you're right. Because, uh, you know, the amount of ships that ran aground was, un was unbelievable. So, you know, even, even if you had shallow waters in there, you know, in some parts or some things like that, you know, add an extra element, but yeah, you can't, it's, it's very rare. Most of, most of the stuff, if you know, the pirate stuff happens near land. It's it's, off, it's rarer than it's in the middle of the Atlantic. Because you're never going right. to hunt. You, you know, if, if I'm crossing the Atlantic, you're going to wait for me to get close to my destination before you rob me, aren't you? You know, right. but then once, and then once you've got the booty, you have less risk of... Um, and it's know, easy to get home. You get robbed yourself. Sorry? It's easy to get home and all. You, you, yeah, you just exactly, yeah. Get back to show. If, if I may say so, there's two excellent books... One's faction and the other one's just brilliant fiction. Uh, one's called Pirates, P Y, yeah, it, as in Pirates by George MacDonald Fraser, and the other one's The Flashman and the Pirates, which is brilliant. Are both completely based on fact, very factual, but amazing reads. I mean, I think I've read one of them, and he, he, uh, he gets uh, tied up on a slave ship, doesn't he, or something? Yeah, going... blackbird him. Yeah, and he and it is that crazy captain, isn't there? And he, is it out of uh, Louisiana? Um, yeah. Yeah, and he's based on a real character, wasn't he? I can't remember that book very well, but it was a great it, read. Great, did, but both both books are well worth reading and completely based on fact. The only fictional character in it is Flashman. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, from Tom and, uh, Brown's you, school days. You, you forget New Orleans was a was a was a bit of a hub at that point. And we're talking uh, more the mid eighteen hundreds now, aren't we? Where Louisiana was a big yeah a big port for slaves as well, as well as um, you know as well as the normal places you think of. Yeah, that was one of the side businesses they had was slaving, and then there was the pirates. I've heard that Henry Morgan. Uh, didn't really like slavery so a lot of the slaves he he would capture ship slave ships take the occupants back to work on his plantation and he would free them um and feed them well and stuff so he could get good production out of them but um he had built up a pretty big uh, sugar plantation you know sugar cane um i watched a documentary where he had <clears throat> he was he was making some dough and once they outlawed piracy he uh he became basically a large plantation owner. Um, so, and sugar was huge. Now, some of the travels we've done in the Caribbean is to the two main things. And a lot of people, one of the uh, commodities that even the pirates traded in that a lot of people forget is salt. Salt. Uh, so, and spices. Spices and, were worth yes. pounds and, and gold. Uh, it's uh, let's see. We did the ABCs. ABCs is Aruba, Bano, and Curacao. Now Bano is uh, not very well known. It's a beautiful island, uh, not commercialized, but uh, Dow Chemical uh, has a huge facility there where they have a shallow uh, inland bay that they flood. Uh, it's only about a foot deep, and they literally just close it off, and then they let the water evaporate, and then they harvest the sea salt. Right. And to this day, and the, and chemistry, there's a lot of uses for, for, for salt and sodium. So, uh, to make other compounds, but when we, we went there, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's the pink, uh, ocean, you know, ocean salt. And, uh, it's just piles and piles. We're talking 10, 12 stories of, um, salt and these big ships pull up and they have conveyors that take it out and fill these big tankers up that are full of salt and uh, it's still a big trade down there, sea salt. Um, it's pretty fascinating. That, so they use that to preserve their meats. Um, yeah. It was used in a lot of things, and salt was worth its weight in gold. 
And then you obviously have the tobacco from uh, you know, the plantations in um in the American you know Americas there, like Virginia, yeah. And then obviously yeah, the spices from South America. Not um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, the sugar. Then obviously the sugar from the Caribbean, silk. The silk. Yeah. Silk. A porcelaine, porcelain from China was worth ridiculous amounts, mm -hmm. uh, and dyes, dyes that you that couldn't enough. that couldn't be right. created. The, the The process was 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 kept secret. You know, it was these these things were worth a lot of money, yes. a lot of money. Yeah, I think you had that. Part of the problem is once you start, eventually it, you have companies territory. like the East India Dock Company yeah. who turned around and basically created their own state, which ended up as part of the empire of the British Empire. You know, yeah. because everything was worth so much money. They had their own army, they had their own navy. They that they, they was running India, yeah, which was worth. Billions. Yeah, people, people forget that that was a private company, you know, and uh, the British Empire came, came along after. But it was it was those guys that set it all up, and same as the, the Dutch guys down there, you know, it was all private. Well, that's still who's running the ABCs down there. Uh, Aruba, uh, Bono, and Curacao are still Dutch <laughs> to this day. Dow is a big uh, Dutch company, but. Um, now, the other interesting thing we found out the last time we were there when we took a tour um, with this little this little taxi cab driver, you can tell a lot, most of the people there are still descendants of the slaves because they did have slaves in, in, in uh, any of the Dutch ports. I think I've gone again. And you had these little huts, these little stone uh, stucco huts that are still there where the slaves slept at night. And they have these pylons that look like tall... Um, pyramidal pylons like you'd see in Egypt, but they would paint them different colors, yellow, red, blue. And I asked him, I said, what are the different colors? He said that was the different grades of salt. And the ship captains would be told, hey, go to this island, Bono, look for blue, uh, the blue pylon. That's the grade of salt we need you to pick up. Uh, it would be used for maybe packing meat. Well, the good, the yellow grain of salt would be used for your table. Uh, it was finer, um, it, uh, um, you know, whatever the qualities were. And then they would park their ships, anchor their ships, and they would literally just row into shore uh, and load up sacks of salt and go back and forth, back and forth, because there was no real port where they could pull in. Right. And um, so, yeah, so uh, not only were pirates wanting silver and gold, but apparently one of the biggest uh, things that they were really after, and it was touched on in uh, Master and Commander, was, uh, hey, if we could capture these ships or capture this French ship, um, it's loaded with whale oil was another one. These guys would get whale yeah. oil and that? all kinds of commodities. And uh, most, most of the gamers out there probably don't realize um, what that there was so many other things that they were after besides because you got to figure that was probably easier if they would raid a little um, settlement there in Bano at night. Um, they could uh, they could steal a bunch of salt, right? Ham Hamburg yeah. Gumbel says black pepper as well. There, see that comment? Yeah, black pepper, right? And that's another one. Uh, I think when we were on Curacao, that was well in liquor too. Uh, I was going to get to that with the black pepper. They, they had a lot of black pepper down there that they would raise. And, uh, with all the sugar cane and stuff industry, I mean, they were making a shit ton of rum. There's a liqueur that they made down there in Curacao. We went on a tour of a distillery. Uh, it's really good, <laughs> but it was a sugar cane and some, uh, like, uh, you said, like some botanicals, they'd use like hibiscus flowers and other things to, to give it a lot of flavor. And, uh, I mean, they could make it fast enough. They're still you know, operating with the same stills in this distillery that were used back in the 1600s, these old copper yeah. stills. They're still making this stuff down there. And it's like going back in time. It really is. And all that, you know, all the, um, the black skin people down there are all the descendants of those slaves that were there hundreds of years ago. Right. It's pretty yeah, fascinating. I mean I was talk, talking of um, 
the uh, the slave kind of thing. I think what what we got to realize as well, you know, when I was doing my bit of research on the uh, Caribbean thing, is is a lot of the time where um, when you know when these slave ships were um, attacked, um, a lot of the slaves were given the opportunity to actually um, become free men uh, under the pirates, and obviously some a lot of them didn't have um, didn't have sailing experience, but they were they ended up joining some of the pirate crews as um, as as the kind of uh, the boarding team, you know, so. Right. They would they would uh you know arm themselves with weapons muskets pistols and then they would actually they would use them preferably so when they did hunt down a slave ship they would pr pr preferably you know, use the uh, African pirates and they would actually um, scare the hell out of the um out of the uh, the slavers because they thought oh my god we better give up because these guys are going to show us no mercy you know and, and they're uh, strong yeah, as there was a lot of, yeah and the, I say there was a lot of um a lot of these ex slaves that became free men under the um under the pirate kind of republics and and if you think about it these pirate republics where every man had a vote all that sort of yeah. stuff that was that's that's pre uh storming the bastille and the french revolution that's that's pre-american revolution so these ideas were really kind of ahead of their time you know that was radical and yeah. democratic yeah well they yeah. had to stick together they they were outlaws of uh, unless they had a contract but they had to really work together as a team or they would be screwed yeah Especially on a ship, you learn really fast on a ship. Every line has its uh, has its name. That's why we don't have any ropes on ships. There's only sheets and lines. Yeah, they call them sheets. You had to know they? what they gave commands. Uh, they would. It was very specific. What 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 uh, line or sheet you were supposed to pull or not pull, or what block or tackle you were supposed to deal with. So they really, as a on those larger ships, even a sloop, you'd have to have a lot of teamwork. Um, so you probably had that gelling, you know, like a like a football team. There was, there was one line. There was one line I quite liked, and it was about um, when Jack, you know, Coleco Jack Rackham was eventually caught, and uh, he was, you know, you know, he had Anne Anne Bonny, the Irish female pirate, with him, and another woman. It was another female pirate, and, and when they were caught by the British, their crew was so drunk that they were unable to fight, and. Uh, and um, so when um, Rackham was was to be hung, the last thing that Anne Bonny said to him was, "Had you fought like a man, you need not have been hung like a dog." You know? <laughs> so that was quite I'm sure she knew her way around the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, no one ever knew what happened to her. She disappeared, so no one ever knew if she got killed or not. I think uh, they showed they showed mercy to the to the two female pirates. I think so. One of them was pregnant, but yeah, if you, if you was pregnant, they couldn't hang you. Right. I see. I think Anne Bonny might pretend she was, but she disappeared off the records. No one ever knew what happened to her in the end. She started out as pretending to be a man. Yeah. Since she yeah, was right. young. Yeah, her, da her dad was a lawyer and... Uh, she was illegitimate. She was illegitimate, so he dressed her up as a, as a boy and boy. had her working as a clerk. Yeah. All kinds of great stories. All kinds of good gaming opportunities uh, with little scenarios. Like I said, you could have like a scenario where you're got a small fr uh french or spanish um small fort and you go and you basically break in and you're not even at they don't even have silver or gold you're after uh some commodity right like some spice yeah and then you've and got you to have get a release from, ship. from from the other side you know so you got to do it quickly or something and some you, you off your heist you get back to the ship and that's when you switch over to your black seas ships and you, yeah. then you do the sea portion where you're trying to flee the port and the french uh catch on to you and their warships uh, uh pursue you and try to take you out that would be a great scenario yeah you should work on something like that, that sounds like a good idea It'd be entertaining yeah i mean this is i mean it's endless the stuff you can do and think up because, like I said, we're going to do more of that here in the gaming hall with uh, scenarios like that, where uh, there's a storyline, and uh, you can play it out over a couple different uh, sessions. You, know, you wouldn't be able to do it all in one session. But, yeah, I mean, uh, and now I'm realizing a lot of the pirate ships, I have a, a frigate, and I have a couple brigs, and I'm like, I need to find some sloops, because yeah. uh, that's really not piratey. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the sloops the, the, won more battles than any galleon. Right. Yeah. I, I I found that really interesting. I had I thought maybe those brigs. I was like, oh, it's probably these little brigs are probably what they used. I had no idea until I 
got to looking at this and it was sloops. And I was like, well, holy crap, that's basically what the boat I had was basically a small sloop. Um, the brig is slightly bigger, right? The brig yeah, brig is going to be a, a twin mast. Uh, now, right. the sloops can be twin mast, the 50 footers, the 45 footers. Um, but the brig is a little wider. A brig was really, you could think of it more, uh, more like a more of a like a merchant type ship. Um, you know, small time, you know, got some guy gets awesome. just started out, you know. And then he'd get him a frigate to, or, a, you know, a larger vessel to haul his spices back for his profit. Um, so you think of all the stuff that went on uh, in those days with the trade, um, even just merchant ships, because they would have, uh, what do they call them, the swivel guns and stuff, so they could protect their their assets, their asses. <laughs> so Yeah, swivel guns so you could turn it around, right, the, the back fire from behind and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, so it's not always um, in in our in the gaming aspect of this topic is not just um, naval ships and pirates. It's also the merchants. You know, a lot of people were in Holland or whatever would get a consortium of investors. They have a ship built, and their job was to go to Barbados to get nutmeg. And they had a plantation owner down there who would sell them the nutmeg. It was a whole industry, and then hey, you got a ship full of nutmeg, and you got to look out for the pirates too, because they want that nut nutmeg for themselves. Nothing like a cup of hot cocoa with a little nutmeg sprinkled on top. Yeah, it's crazy. Some of the you think of some of these spices, you think people died over over these, you know. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention quickly was uh, for some of the punishments, you know. Like, so you have yeah, walking the plank, which I don't think really happened. I think that was a kind of a bit of a you know, a bit of a made up thing. Yeah, Hollywood kind of made up walking the plank. You're more likely to be marooned on an island, you know, voted off the ship and left, you know, left to die on a, on a, on a, on a small island. Uh, sold as a slave, flogging was obviously common where you were, uh, you know, that's where over the barrel comes from. You know, you either tied over the mast or a barrel or a gun, uh, or kill hauling was the worst of them. You guys know about kill kill hauling? No. So that that was uh that was where they tied a rope around the ship underneath, and you were dra you were you were attached to the rope, and you were pulled. So your body would go against all the sharp barnacles on the bottom of the boat, and your flesh would just be ripped ripped open. You come up the other side, and they just pull you around until you died. It was an awful way of dying. Oi. Another one was dunking. They'd tie you to a wooden beam, dunk you under the water, and it was actually used as a um ceremonial uh, as an honor but then obviously when, as a punishment they just dunked you for longer and deeper you know so not very nice not very nice stuff <laughs> i would imagine it'd be like the modern mafia and that is if you were doing what you're supposed to do and you weren't doing anything nefarious they usually would uh keep you as part of the team but if you they found that you weren't uh you were pinching you were stealing behind their backs you were lying uh the whole I know there's no honor amongst thieves, but you figure uh, some of these pirates would double cross each other and they probably got the most severe punishments. Yeah. I mean, some of it was just superstition. You know, there was punishment for superstition. It's like hmm. uh, there was a story where uh, you heard of the albatross, it's not the, like, the bird with the largest wingspan. And it's usually seen at sea. And uh, some thought it was good luck. So I think there was a story of a pirate that they saw an albatross and a pirate fell off the rigging, fell to his death. So one of the pirates shot the albatross um and then they uh then the wind stopped so they were kind of uh, stranded with no wind uh so they they recovered the body of the albatross they tied the guy that shot it to the mast uh tied the carcass around his neck and, and then whipped him and didn't feed him any any water or um or food for multiple days until the wind picked up so you know so even that it, so some sort of seeing an albatross as bad luck some sort of good luck um, they used to keep turtle bones in their pockets for good luck. Hmm. Uh, and if you if you killed a turtle and didn't eat it, that was seen as bad luck. You had uh, if you saw sharks swimming in the wake of the boat, then they thought that means someone was going to die. Um, they wouldn't sit sail on a Friday because that's when Jesus was killed. So they thought that was bad luck. You know, the superstitions were a big part of it. Or, or you know, or it, you could be called a Jonah if you know you maybe had a uh, you know some sort of disability or you just became un, un, uh, unpopular. They might on kill the master that. commander, they had a Jonah. All oh, right, 
He says, How does that feel? he's calling it up. Can't you see? He's conjuring it up. All right, yeah. He had bad mojo. There you go. So he ended up killing himself, but that was terrible. But notice the next day the wind picked up. He's like, uh, you know, there's a lot of superstitious uh, yeah. sailors. Yeah, well, like uh, obviously the, the old one, if rats leave the ship, the, the, the voyage is doomed. Um, or, or if you whistled on the boat, that was bad luck because it means you're bringing on a storm. <laughs> this is crazy. Right, and it's still stuck with me uh, being from central Kentucky. Uh, I'll my my wife will be doing. I'm like, don't do that. That's bad luck. Yeah. And it's like uh, just ingrained in me because I've, you know, coming up from a little kid, I would hear this, my grandmother or someone say, don't do that. It's bad luck. So it's stuck with me. And she's like, oh, that's just ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, these things, these uh, these things from the past are still still floating around to a certain degree. Yeah, 100 percent. All right. Well, we're hitting 3 p.m. Um, I'm going to go start getting ready for my dinner. Uh, my fancy dinner, but uh, well, yeah. See, Jonah's a biblical term, right? All right. Uh, yeah, I thought it might be Jonah. I th- when I was reading about that, I thought it sounded biblical, but I can't quite picture. The Jonah and the whale. Uh, oh right, yeah. There you go. And uh, yeah, they they would twist all those like uh, they would call him a Jonah. That really, you know, uh, that I think some of the sailors knew a little bit of the, about the Bible. Uh, and, uh, obviously pirates knew a lot less, but, um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff is just, uh, you know, spun probably from the villages they were raised in and these things that just perpetuate if it was all coincidence. So if that something happened or did someone did something and then the next day there was a nasty storm, they'd say, oh, it must've been caused by this. Um, even the native American Indians, the South American Indians had these, these wild superstitions also, um, you know, not walking sideways across a path. If there was, the sun was setting in, uh, on the right side of the, there's all kinds of crazy yeah. things they would do. Uh, even the Nate, like I said, the native Americans had these kinds of things too. So yeah, they're the same, they're the same. They said, let the sun shine on your face and the wind at your back or something. And that was yeah, I mean, and this stuff just perpetuates, and uh, I'm trying to think real quick of one of the ones that I stick to um, about. Oh, it's a uh, that something. Some I can just uh, tell that what they're doing is going to. I'm like, don't say that. It's like bad karma. You don't don't put it out there. You can't say something bad about someone or uh, she. Th- th- something really bad's going to happen to her. I said, don't say that. That's you know my yeah, foreboding. You're basically jinxing the person. Yeah. That's another thing that I'll, that's big with uh, Southerners. Well, Myth jinx. says his equipment's given up the ghost, but thanks for having us on. So, yeah, thanks, Myth, for coming on. We appreciate that. Thanks, man. I appreciate you being here, and uh, don't get jinxed. Yeah. <laughs> don't get jinxed, guys. Thanks for tuning in today, and uh, we'll chat later and uh, come up with another uh, concept. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks, man. Have see, a good See you next week. Yep. Bye. Take it easy.